The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. Let us pray. Come, Prince of Peace, O oh, come to us this holy Advent time. Come to the busy stores, the quiet home, the noisy streets, the country roads. Come to us all. Touch every heart with your love, and we may know your love, and in its blessed peace bear charity to all humankind. Amen. Isaiah from the ninth chapter, verses two through seven. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who have lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy, and they rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boot of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, and his authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom, he will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord will do this. We're bringing in the Christmas dreams for the Advent season is here. We're bringing in holly, spruce, and pine to hang up on the walls and shine with Christmas love and cheer. We're coming with the cedar boughs. We're bringing Christmas in. And all the families here and there, around the world and everywhere, are singing Christmas in. Everywhere in homes and in our churches, we hang the Christmas dreams. In our merriment and joy, we call to mind the meaning of each one. They are not mere traditions, but symbols to remind us of the gift of God in Jesus Christ. Bring in the greens, the pine, the fir, the cedar, all are a part of Christmas joy. When all else is barren, the evergreen reminds us of the promised reawakening of the earth in spring. So early Christians decked the sanctuary with the boughs of evergreen as a promise of the new life and a sign of the hope that Christ, in Christ, all will live forever. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you, the cypress, the pine, to beautify the place of our sanctuary.
custom of using holly at Christmas time was brought to our churches by the English settlers. The plant often has been called the holy tree, the name coming from the Old English. According to one legend, the crown of thorns that Jesus wore at his crucifixion was made from holly branches and leaves twined together in a circle. The legend says that as soldiers pressed the crown into Jesus' brow, the white berries on the holly turned a brilliant red. To this day, the holly's berries are bright red, reminding us of the blood that Jesus shed for us. Another story describes that when Jesus' enemies were searching for him, the plant concealed its whereabouts. As a reward, the holly was allowed to keep its leaves throughout the year. Thereafter, the meaning of immortality with the promise of life everlasting was attached to holly. The use of holly in wreaths and other decorations at Christmas, the day of Jesus' birth, foreshadows his suffering and death. We are reminded that the baby born in Bethlehem grew to be the man who was crucified for our sake. Because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we have been redeemed and crowned with his love and compassion. May the glistening leaves and bright berries of the holly remind us of the joy and happiness that come to the people as we remember the birth of Jesus. Listen to these words from a very old English carol. The holly and the ivy, when they are both full grown, of all the trees that are in the wood, the holly bears the crown. The holly bears a blossom as white as a lily flower, and Mary bore sweet Jesus Christ to be our sweet Savior. The holly bears a berry as red as any blood, and Mary bore sweet Jesus Christ to do poor sinners good. The holly bears a prickle as sharp as any thorn, and Mary bore sweet Jesus Christ on Christmas day in the morn. The holly bears a bark as bitter as any gall, and Mary bore, bore sweet Jesus Christ for to redeem us all. Come for us the sign of merriment, symbolizing the kiss. But among the Romans, the mistletoe was considered a symbol of hope and peace. Therefore, when enemies met under it, they laid their weapons down, kissed each other, and declared a truce until the next day. Thus, it has become a custom among Christians to seek, use mistletoe at Christmas. It can remind us of the peace which comes from God and the power of Christ to heal differences between all people. Thank you.
Bible goes back to ancient times. The banner is a strong visual means of expressing ideas and can con communicate a message quickly. For Christians, the banner was a way to express faith and hope. Contemporary usage of banners has taken on many shapes and forms and continue to tell the story of faith, sharing Christian goals and feelings. Our banner this evening testifies of heaven's joy in announcing the birth of Jesus, the light into the darkness of our tattered and wanton world. Hear these words while you gaze upon the banner. Man, rejoice, your search is over. Blooms the rose on Jesse's rod. On this day is born of the Virgin, Christ your Lord, the Son of God. All your burdens will be lightened. All your sorrows he will heal. <laughs> Christmas symbols is the star. God promised Abraham and Sarah that their children would be as many as the stars in the heavens. The six-pointed star of David became the national symbol of Judaism and hope to Jewish people of the, this promise. As the children of Israel looked forward to the coming of the Messiah, the star became a reminder of the providence of God. Centuries later, a star shining on that first Christmas night sent forth its light over the manger in Bethlehem. Christians have used the five-pointed star of Bethlehem to symbolize for us the birth of Jesus. Israel's looked for Messiah, and its light continues to shine today, lighting the way for all who seek to find the Christ. The carol we sing about the kings and the star of Bethlehem is very distinctive. No one has given us a more impressive description than the author of these words. O oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to that perfect light. Now, as the star ascended in the east to guide the people to the joyous Christmas morn, where long ago a little child was born, reverence and love prepared the feast. Come, let us follow where the star is bright, to that place where the infant Jesus lay. So sweet and innocent upon the hay, and what on our knees, pray to God, give us light. Thank you. 
centuries, the pealing bells gave forth their glad message. However, in medieval times, the bells were slowly tolled for an hour before midnight on Christmas Eve. And then, on the hour, their voices changed to joyous ringing. The tolling was to warn the powers of darkness of the approaching birth of the Messiah. And around the world, bells peel out the glad tidings of the Messiah's birth. In cities, Chimes sound joyously from cathedral towers, and in many churches, a single bell spreads the same message. Christ is born. The sound of the bell carries far and wide so all may know the good news of Christmas. Wake me tonight, my parents dear, that I may hear the Christmas bells so soft and clear, to high and low glad tidings tell. God the Father loved us well. Christmas greenery reflects traditions from Europe, from Old World traditions, but the colorful flaming star-like poinsettia is a native of this continent. It was first 
introduced to this country in 1828 by Dr. Joel Robert Lanzette, a minister to Mexico from whom it was named. This brilliant tropical plant is a happy flower to use, for its red color symbolizes love and sacrifice. It is called Flower of the Holy Knife. A charming Mexican legend explains its origins. Having finished running his daily errands, an orphan boy named Pedro sadly counted his centavos, his money. There were hardly enough of them to buy his evening meal. Come with us to the cathedral, urged his friends. No, answered Pedro. I have no money to buy a gift for the Christ child. We'll take this suggested one of his practical friends, pointing to a weed by the side of the road. And hesitantly, Pedro picked up the stringy weed and climbed the steep hill to the church and slowly made his way to the altar with his manger scene. And kneeling, he reverently laid his gift in front of the figure of the Christ child. He soon became aware of the murmuring of the crowd. And in wide amazement, he saw a beautiful scarlet flower formed like a star where only dried leaves had existed a moment before. His humble offering had been miraculously transformed. angels the great glad tidings tell O oh, come to us abide with us our Lord Emmanuel in the advent wreath standing in the center is the reminder of Jesus Christ the light of the world as his light shines in the darkness it reveals the faces of all those who follow him Now, with the beauty of the greens to remind us of the glory that came to earth at Christmas, let us hear again the birth narrative of Jesus, he who is called Light of the World. Reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verse 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus to all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinus was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in the bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was not a place for them in the inn. At that, in that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over the flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth, 
and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on the earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Oxen lowing, little knowing, Christ the babe is Lord of all. Swift are winging angels singing, no wells ringing, tidings bringing, Christ the babe is Lord of all. Flocks were sleeping, shepherds keeping, vigil till the morning noon, saw the glory, heard the story, tidings of a gospel true. Thus rejoicing, free from sorrow, Praises voicing through tomorrow, Christ the babe was born for you. Let us pray. O oh God of the beginning and end, let the spirit of light bring illumination to humankind. And let the spirit of peace be spread abroad. May all people of goodwill everywhere meet in a spirit of cooperation. 
May forgiveness on the part of all people be the keynote of these days. Let power attend the efforts of the peacemakers. So let it be, and help us to do our part. We know, O oh Lord of life and love, about the need. Touch our hearts and men with love, that we too may love and give. In the name of Jesus our Christ, amen.
Sunday.